is it? Dave, it's your Idaho Central app here. Any chance you're missing a debit card? Let's get that taken care of for you. With ICCU's card control, you can turn any card off with the tap of your finger. You've got it. And back on again. Ow, 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 ow. The closest Idaho Central Credit Union branch is in your pocket. Ooh, the gym. Mold stomping grounds. <laughs> Hank Patterson, fly fishing guide. Riley Smith, tight end. I yeah, appreciate that. Hey, you wouldn't happen to be the kicker. No, tight end. Again, thank you. I'm looking for a kicker for Lithia Ford's fall kickoff sale. But you're not the kicker. No. Yeah. Now nah, the kicker's probably taller and in a lot better shape. So, okay. What uh, position do you play? Tight end. Squats. Yeah. Try it sometime. RowPaint.com, the official paint and coatings company of Boise State Athletics, is going all in this season with an all-star lineup. First up, he led the Broncos to three conference championships and ten 20-win seasons. It's Coach Leon Rice. Next, he's the founder and CEO of RowPaint.com. He played a little basketball in high school on the driveway with his mom. It's Andy Rowe. Oh, no. Want to just paint my house? Now that I can do. When I want Boise State to win, I trust Coach Rice to lead the Broncos to victory. And when I want the best painting and garage floor coating, I trust RowPaint.com to get that job done right. This is Bronco Nation News Live. The best interviews, the most informed opinions, the latest breaking news, all from the top Boise State insiders. Today's broadcast is coming from the Cutwater Spirits Can Cocktail Studios. Check out one of their more than 30 flavors of pre-mixed premium cocktails at your local gas station or grocery store. Cutwater Can Cocktails is perfect for your next game day tailgate party. Now, here's four-time NSMA Idaho Sports Writer of the Year, B.J. Rains, with another edition of Bronco Nation News Live. we doing Boise State fans happy Monday to you welcome on into another edition of Bronco Nation News live here at BroncoNationNews.com the social media channels Facebook uh, Twitter X whatever you call it YouTube uh, for both uh, BNN but also KTIK today so make sure you're following both KTIK and BNN on all the various social media channels uh, we ask you to go to YouTube that's the, the main one we're trying to monetize and focus on so if you're watching on Facebook watching on X Head on over to YouTube, the BNN YouTube. Make sure you click subscribe there uh, in the bottom of the screen. It's Mondays, and uh, again, I, I know you, I say it every week, Mike Prater, but no better way for, for folks to wake up, get out of bed, and start the new work week than, than seeing Mike Prater on their big screen for 45 minutes. That is so painful. You should be putting me on like Friday at 5 after everybody started uh, happy hour. That, that would be less painful, but uh, Mondays are a little bit difficult, but it's good because you know what? We got a whole weekend to talk about, and we got a whole week ahead of us to talk about. Let's get after it today, BJ. Gerald starts us off enjoying my Bronco Brew coffee while waiting for my man uh, BJ to strike the stage. Go Broncos. Appreciate that, uh, Gerald. And uh, by the way, Mike Prater, uh, shout out to Matt Bauscher, Bauscher Real Estate, Kelly Ridley. They're doing a tremendous job helping get our house ready. But today is uh, the day that they're uh, staging it, bringing in some furniture. They're uh, cleaning the windows today. So uh, there's random people coming in and out of my house. My door's open. I don't know who's coming in, but uh, just uh, if there's a brief moment where uh, I, I'm distracted or something's going on. It, uh, it is what it is today. And I know Mike Prater would, would love to just talk for 30 minutes straight by himself. So we'll see if we can uh, <laughs> need to make that happen at some point today. But if you go full screen, Mike Prater, just give me 20 seconds and I'll be right back. There's no problem. Uh, but hopefully we'll go uh, uninterrupted today. But uh, yeah, we are uh, 
upgrading. It's uh, when you buy a house 10 years ago with no kids and now you have two kids and you both you and your wife work from home, uh, the house gets a little small. So we're uh, looking to stay in the Meridian area, but uh, don't have a house just yet lined up. But uh, it sounds like in this market, it's much easier to get a house if you've already sold yours. And Matt Bauscher, one of our great sponsors, I've talked a lot about him and his company, but now for the first time using him as a client, Mike Prater. And uh, there's a reason that uh, he is consistently the number one ranked realtor in the Treasure Valley. And so Matt Bauscher, Kelly Ridley, the whole team over there at Bauscher Real Estate, highly recommend them. BauscherRealEstate.com. Check them out. They're doing a tremendous job helping us get our house ready. Uh, but I just wanted to throw that out there that uh, there, there may be a brief distraction at some point during today's show. But we'll, when was the last time you moved, Mike Prater? Uh, let's see. I moved on uh, July 4th weekend, 2010 was the last time I moved. And uh, I'm ready to move to a studio apartment downtown where I can, don't have to worry about lawns and, and stupid things like that. Although I did see Matt Bauscher the other day on one of his social media channels post a five million dollar house i'm assuming that's not the one you're going to be moving into or maybe you are no that's the one i'm selling i got mad at him for posting that but uh, <laughs> i told him no photos till after it sold i didn't want anyone to know where i lived and yeah that was uh and i wanted him to post it for six million he thought with 5.5 was a good starting spot but uh uh yeah no that one's probably a little bit out of our out of our price range yeah, but yeah yeah uh, you have a nice, you have a sweet house, man. Don't move. You got the putting green. You got, uh, you're, 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 I like your house, man, but I do, uh, I do have a nice house in a nice neighborhood. It's just getting a little bit old and, and I'm getting a little bit old. I don't like to deal with the, uh, the maintenance and the lawn and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, but, uh, it is what it is. So you'll find a cool house. Matt will help you out. And, uh, and then I can't wait for the party. I love it when my friends buy a new house because that's a guaranteed party. Oh, we're definitely having one of those um, because my house is, I've had some gatherings over at my house. You've been over a couple of times, but it's not exactly the best. Ha the out the backyard was fine, but the inside's not necessarily big enough to, now that I kind of laugh about it, thinking of some of the parties and people I've had over uh, in actually a year ago tonight, uh, we had people over to watch the, uh, the uh, San Diego state UConn national championship game. We had a good crew come over and, um, but, uh, yeah, we're going to, we'll definitely, we'll definitely do that. But uh, I, I want to move on, but I will say this is the first time I've looked in a long time, Mike Prater, and this is probably a dumb comment, but I didn't realize how few houses in this, uh, area have no basement. And oh. as, some, as somebody from the Midwest who every single house has finished basements, and that's just another nice man cave area, an area for, uh, TVs and kids play areas and all that. I, uh, any house that I find with a basement hasn't been built before like 19, it was built, built before like 1970 or whatever. Really? So, um, I had no idea. Yeah. All the older houses on the, the bench and in the other areas, uh, all, you know, the older houses have basements, but if you're wanting one of these newer homes built like in the nineties or on, I can't find one with a basement. I was, I was trying to find that, but now we're going to have to go for the, maybe the upstairs loft area instead of the downstairs. But, uh, yeah, and houses are, I know if this is breaking news, but real, the, the, <laughs> Houses aren't cheap and the rates aren't no. cheap right now. So no, no, it's brutal out there. Good luck. Jay, Jay Tuss asked me after the interviews yesterday. So, so I'm serious, man. He goes, it's a serious question. He goes, tell me the secret. How, how do you uh, buy a house right now in these, in this market with these interest rates? And I said, you have a wife that makes a lot more than you do. Uh, that, that's a good start when your wife can uh, break in, you know, do, do very well for herself. It's helping us out here, but we'll see what happens. I'm excited to move forward. Thanks again, Bowser real estate, best in the business. And I highly do recommend. I know there's everybody has 10 friends that are realtors. I get it. I hurt my feelings of three friends that are realtors that I told them I couldn't use. And I got to go with my sponsor, Matt. And I'm very happy I did because Matt's done a tremendous job. So Bowser real estate.com, uh, check them out. And, and, uh, yeah, Prater, whenever you're ready, make sure Bowser's, uh, the, the one you're, the one you're calling there, but uh, so as soon as I get that 6 million bucks in my pocket, if I can get a raise from you, then maybe I can afford a Matt Bowser. You know, I might really get him to come down just a little on that just for you. So we'll, 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 we'll talk about that. But I mentioned national championship game is tonight. Enjoyed watching the women's game yesterday. Uh, ended up not being a, a super close game. It was kind of, they were kind of kept him at arm's length for most of the game after the initial uh, Caitlin Clark flurry and Iowa had the lead. It was a, a great first half and then kind of as expected. They just not enough firepower, particularly on the uh, offensive glass, they just could not stop South Carolina's size from all the putbacks and things. And so South Carolina goes undefeated. They win the championship. And now uh, tonight, Mike Prater, uh, you didn't have two, kind of what we expected. Saturday, you know, not super close, you know, down to the wire type games, but you get that probably tonight. Uh, these are the number one and number two ranked teams at Ken Palm. It's been two of the, you know, what most people say are the two best teams all year meeting uh, for the championship tonight. UConn going for back-to-back -back Purdue, uh, trying to stop that. Uh, you know, I'm, uh, I'm excited to watch the game tonight. Yeah, I am too. And it's been a great weekend of basketball. We talked about it last week at Idaho Sports Talk, a, a four straight days of just absolute wonderful basketball. And 
It started Friday night, and, and those games were fun on Friday night. I totally got into them. And then Saturday, obviously, the men's Final Four. You know, we talked about it on I Know Sports Talk with Ball Game and I that I, I thought Saturdays both games were going to be a blowout. And then I thought we would have an epic, epic, epic basketball game tonight for the championship. So I'm really excited about this game tonight. And you know me, I, I'm not a huge, huge college basketball fan, but at this time of year and certainly uh, the national championship, I, I love that kind of feeling. And this is the battle that, you know, if we all don't have, and I don't, so I'm not, I'm not picking on people, but if we all didn't have Connecticut and Purdue in the final, then you're crazy because, you know, looking behind now with the benefit of hindsight, it's pretty obvious that these are the two best teams, the two dominant players the best matchup. This is the way it should be. And college sports isn't always about that. So I, I'm glad it turned out the way it did. And I can't wait to see this. I have a feeling it might be favoring UConn because I like their big guy over Purdue's big guy. I'm not a big Zach Eady guy. And I think Klingon can really neutralize some of the things that uh, that Zach Eady does. And after that, I'm not sure how balanced and how deep Purdue is. So uh, I'm kind of a UConn guy. I'm jumping on their bandwagon right now. And I just think it's going to be a good game. I can't wait. Typically, I'd go for uh, the underdog, Purdue, to try to not let the team go back-to-back, but uh, I'm still like seething over a bad beat when we were in Vegas with uh, Purdue on that last day. If we had left at you know, 8 a.m. instead of 8 p.m. on that last Saturday, Mike Prater, I, I would have had a much thicker wallet coming back. And Ouch. Purdue, uh, in the semifinals, I think it was, on that Saturday of the Big Ten tournament, literally gave up a, a, a shot at the buzzer in regulation to let Wisconsin tie it and then a shot at the end of at, at the buzzer in overtime or with one second left whatever uh, and, and twice I was about to win a fairly significant amount of money and on a, on a nice three team parlay and twice Purdue um, Ouch. let it go and so I'm still mad at Purdue for that and so I'm not <laughs> sure I can fully root for them tonight um, but no huskies. Uh, no huskies yeah we'll see I, I do kind of like the and I'm gonna be fa- fascinated to see what what Zach Eady becomes as a pro um, I, I'm very curious kind of you don't think it's gonna be much I, I I tend to I tend to agree with you but I mean the dude plays 40 minutes a game he's out there I mean he can for a college level he's kind of reminds me like a Tyler Hansbro just dominates the college level and we'll see what he can do at the uh, NBA level moving forward, but uh, yeah, should be fun tonight. I don't mind the start time, mountain time. I love the mountain time. I saw everyone complaining. I mean, on the East Coast, it doesn't start till like nine twenty at night. Uh, Seven twenty mountain time is perfect. Uh, game will be over by nine thirty. Um, what's the uh, what are the chances that the Boise State uh, appearance in one shining moment is Leon Rice playing the drums? <laughs> I never thought of that. Um, um, probably not, but uh, that's a good candidate. I. I, I, I didn't even think about that, but maybe he can sneak up. I'll, I'll say no. I'll take the under on that one, and I'll say okay. no, but that'd be a pretty cool clip to throw Usually in Usually at the beginning of the video, they have the doom, 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 doom. And yeah, the song yeah. I wonder if it's Leon Rice playing the drums. And if it is, during the game, during that weekend, CBS asked me for my video because they weren't recording it. So if Leon Rice playing the drums is in one shining moment, that means me and Bronco Nation News made <laughs> one shining moment. So that's what everyone needs oh. to be watching for tonight. Um, that's what everyone needs to be watching for tonight. Does BNN make one shining moment? Now, see, the problem there is, uh, and, and this will tell you how, uh, what kind of an old fuddy duddy is. I, I've banned one shining moment. For, I haven't watched one shining moment for probably 15 years. The second the game's over, I turn it off. I purposely avoid that. And I'm not sure why, because it's not that bad. Uh, maybe if 10 years ago, I had a bad day and, and I'm just sticking with my tradition, but I haven't watched one shining moment for 15 years. So I'll keep an eye out for Bronco nation news. And if you tell me, maybe I'll record it. And, and then if I need to go back and look at Leon Rice, I will, but I've banned one shining moment from my life and I'm perfectly okay with that. BJ. I'll tell you what though, as an alum of someone that's been alive and for two national championships, there's not a better one shining moment than after you, than, than when your team wins at all. And, and to stay and watch that uh, a couple of years ago, uh, when they beat uh, North Carolina and that huge comeback like two years ago, we were at Big Al's with like 50 people there. And I remember watching that one shining moment and it was, uh, it's pretty cool when your team wins it all. So I will say that. But if you're a school that's like time, that's the last time you cried in public, right? Uh, you know what? I didn't cry for that. I don't think so. I was, I was, I was happy, but I don't think I cried. Well, you can cry for happy. I'm telling you right now. And the closest I came was in 98 with Utah losing to Kentucky after beating North Carolina in the final four. But, if my team ever won a national championship, I would watch one shining moment. And I don't care if I'm in private. I don't care if I'm in public. I promise you, I will cry. I, It'll be tears of happiness for me. I will say the last time I might have cried might have been um, when the Blues won the Stanley Cup. Ah. And, and, that, and that might and and the reason for that is it was the first championship, you know, with with having a son. 
and him being able to sit there and watch it with me. And um, I cried. I, I actually did shed a tear. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna deny this. I did shed a tear when when the, with the day that it was announced the Rams were leaving town, and it mm. wasn't even. It wasn't even become. I, it wasn't even because I was like a diehard Rams fan. I was just sad. That I was. It was because I had like a one year old. And I put him in a Rams onesie that time. And I just remember like just not I knew that I wasn't going to be able to like watch a hometown NFL football game with my son ever again. And that was a little bit of a, a difficult moment. So now we like 40,000 that packed the dome uh, root for the Battle Hawks. And uh, we uh, how about that, Mike Prater? 40,000 showed up in St. Louis. A question about the UFL. 40,000. I've already got to, after this show, I've already got to go out in Cubicleville and deal with ball game. Who's going to talk about the UFL all weekend? What's, no, don't get me sucked into the I'm UFL. Just saying, we had 40,000. We are not a bad sports town. We are not a bad football town, regardless of what Stan Kroenke wanted to say. And people <laughs> like Alex Gold that want to talk trash on St. Louis because they're from Kansas City can, oh, you've <laughs> lost two football teams, whatever, whatever. But the fans were not the problem. Stan Kroenke wanted to be in LA. He tanked the team and then moved them to, and I make it. Hey, he's got a billion, $3 billion, whatever stadium. I get it. I'm not saying it was the wrong move. I'm just saying it wasn't because of St. Louis being some, my, my hometown still taking shrapnel for that, which I will still be pissed and argue anybody about, but I digress. We'll move on. Uh, yes. the, 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 uh, by the way, speaking of basketball, no news for Boise state uh, in the transfer portal yet. We had the Kobe young uh, last week was the most recent one. Kobe young, Jace Whiting, the two scholarship players that are leaving uh, Cade rice, leaving uh, walk on Sam winter is a walk on, but is not coming back next year. So that's at least four spots. Uh, by the way, Alex Martin, Mike Prater, uh, Cam Martin's brother, I'm going to have him on the show this week because he's going to start doing some advertising with us. He is a unbelievable businessman for being a 19 year old or whatever he is. He uh, did some things and, and uh, uh, Jordan K wrote a great story back when he first got here last summer, but he's like already a very successful businessman. And um, he already, he started a lawn care business when he moved out here. He's already bought out three other lawn care businesses in the last year. And so he is building his lawn care business. I paid him full price had him come out, wanted to try him out to cut my grass like last week, and it was phenomenal. Did a great job, and someone said, you're talking about complaining about your grass. They said, let Alex Martin take care of your yard, Prater. So uh, you need to uh, maybe reach out to Alex Martin, but uh, he's a very successful businessman. I, I don't expect him back next year either. I think he's there's no reason with what I heard he's how he's doing with the lawn care. So uh, I would think with his brother being done. So you're going to have I mean, literally, even counting the walk-ons, like two-thirds of the team is going to be new next year, probably, uh, aside from the uh, other uh, you know, six scholarship players that we expect uh, to return. Chibuzo Abo, there was a national report. I did uh, communicate with Chibuzo briefly and got it confirmed. He is planning to uh, uh, declare for the NBA draft. I don't think that should be a surprise to anybody. I've been saying on your show, my show, for months, there's really no downside to that. He has one year of college left. Uh, why not declare for the draft, go do a couple workouts, get some NBA gear, see where you stand, uh, see what you need to work on. Um, I mean, there's always a chance. I mean, he's with his size and the way he shoots it, maybe he intrigues the team enough that promises him a second round pick and he goes. Um, but I would suspect he'll do this, find out some things, and then uh, eventually pull his name out and come back for his final year at Boise State. But uh, there was some uh, I don't know if uproar is the right word, but uh, surprise, I guess, among some fans yesterday. Oh, they might lose Chibuzo Abo to the NBA, but anyone I think that's been paying attention to this should should know that this was kind of the expected move. It should formally happen sometime this week, I believe, uh, but he did tell me that is indeed the plan, as we all expected, declare for the draft and see what happens. Yeah, and yeah, that's that's too bad if people thought that, that was a surprise because you've done a good job of spreading that word. We had Chibuzo Abo just a few weeks ago right here in this studio, three feet from where I'm sitting right now, saying that he was going to declare for the NBA draft and, and, and test the waters. I fully expect him to come back. For him, it's a personal decision. I get it. But if I'm a, an outsider and I'm looking straight at the at the X's and O's and the facts, Chibuzo Abo, is, he's kind of there, but he's not ready for the NBA. I do not envision Chibuzo Abo in the NBA. Now, if he wants to go into the G League and grind for a couple of years and continue to get better and thinks that that's a better path and that's a personal decision for him, I can't get into that headspace because that's his decision. So I have no idea what's going to happen there. But Chibuzo Abo is not an NBA player as we sit here right now from my outside perspective. Uh, I think he will go test it. I think he will come back. I think he can make himself so much better, a little bit more consistent shooter, a little bit more consistent across the board. And he could lead this team to really good things potentially. Uh, so I, I think everything in front of him uh, for his career, he's he's got 15 years to deal with his basketball career. Coming back to Boise for another 12 months, 10 months, whatever it is, it is not that significant of a commitment. And I fully expect him 
uh, from a basketball perspective to come out or to come back to Boise State. If he makes the personal decision to give the give the NBA a shot, you can't do anything about that. But I think that would be a mistake. Yeah, and I mean, if he can make any any kind of close to the improvement he made from two years ago to last year, you know, in this offseason to into this season coming up, he could, I think, significantly increase his stock and chances of, of his pro career if he has another strong college season. So uh, Guy says, I've seen more people surprised he has eligibility left than ones who are surprised he's declaring for the draft. So I guess some folks didn't realize he had the COVID year uh, left. But uh, Abo will declare this week at some point, And then, like I said, um, he will, uh, you know, we'll see no news yet on Tyson Degenhardt or Omar Stanley. Wouldn't surprise me if one or both do the same thing there when you've got one year of eligibility left and you haven't done it yet, you know, why not? So wouldn't, but again, I would expect both those guys to, to likely return next season. Um, but whenever the, the national report comes in, I'm sure people will freak out again, but, uh, yeah. but when, you, when you, when you have one year left, that's just the thing you can do. And the good news is here, and this is the hard part for coaches right now, you know, Leon and Burns and Durier and, the, and that whole crew and, and even down to the collective, you know, it's not so much about what, you know, in the past it was always, what's what are the NBA guys saying about me and I'm going to use that to make my decision? Well, now it's like, can Boise State get me 200,000 bucks? And money is not an issue anymore. If, if, if Abo wants to go into the pro basketball and he wants to go into the G League and make, what, 75,000 bucks or whatever it is G Leaguers make, he can do that. Boise State could probably pay him double that, maybe even triple that, and get some more money for Stanley, get some more money. They may have to come up with three, dollars $400,000, maybe even, do I dare say, a half a million dollars to take care of these three guys. That's probably too much. That's probably a lot. But you got three dudes who have a lot of leverage right now in terms of, you know, I mean, Tyson Degenhardt's not going to the NBA. Stanley's not going to the NBA. I think those guys are coming back whether they test the waters or not. But with that said, in today's age of business, when it comes to college athletics, they both deserve significant NIL money, at least $100,000 type of money, whether that comes in services, cash, cars, however you want to deal with it, donuts for Tyson, whatever it is, get these guys a couple hundred thousand dollar package and, and take care of business. I think Boise State, Leon, we, we made fun of Leon Rice about this time last year when he made the super car, the super team comment, but I've all, and I know you believe this because we've talked about this on the show, next year's team has the potential to be the rock star of all Boise State basketball teams. I'm not throwing anything out there beyond the potential of this roster, and I think it's pretty cool. And if all three of those guys come back, I'm really excited for next year. Yeah, yeah. Fans, you know, didn't want to hear it last week. I get it. Maybe still don't want to hear it. Maybe you don't want to hear it. But yeah, I mean, if the if the pieces fall right, they're gonna for sure probably have the best returning trio in the league with, with uh, Degenhardt, Abo, and and uh, Stanley. I don't think anybody, at least from a returning standpoint, will be able to compete with. That. I mean, all three could make a case for first team preseason. They won't all get it, but I mean, if you did a second or third team preseason, I think all three of those guys could could go into the year at least in terms of three of the top ten players in the league. Um, and then you'll see what happens with Roddy Anderson and his improvement, and then Keenan Meadow, and yeah, and yeah, you have three spots. And I mean, again, all we can go off is track record and what we've seen. And last year, Boise State had three spots, and they got Omar Stanley, Roddy Anderson, and Cam Martin. If they could hit, you know, a, a home run with three of those guys of similar caliber again, I mean, two starters and and, and, and another key contributor off the bench. So I know Martin didn't do what they thought he would because he was hurt mostly, but um, I mean, I think you got to say you got to expect that at this point. They know what they're doing in the transfer portal. If they can find a couple key guys, yeah, I don't think there's any reason to think next year's team shouldn't be better. I know, I know you scoffed when I said significantly better a couple weeks ago, but I, I think the pieces are there. Nothing against Max Rice, Cam Martin, but I think you could uh, upgrade in the transfer portal and this team a year and more so just the experience, the extra year and improvement of Degenhardt and Stanley and Abo and Anderson, I think, and, and Meadow, I think this, I think they really could be uh, a solid team next year. Let's talk football. We're about halfway through here. I want to talk about the spring scrimmage that we had uh, on Saturday, Mike Prater, but first I want to tell folks about uh, Cutwater Spirits, our studio sponsor, more than 35 flavors of pre premium cocktails. Pick one up at your local gas station or grocery store. Perfect uh, to watch the national championship game tonight. Uh, love that Long Island. Love the pina colada, the margaritas, a lot of great flavors. Make sure you check them out. Cutwater Spirits, thanks to Stein Distributing. Our title sponsor, of course, RoePaint.com. ROEPaint.com. Check them out. They just painted our entire house, so I can say the interior painting is top-notch. They can also do those concrete coatings, which they've done a couple times at our house. Highly recommend RoePaint.com, our title sponsor. Andy Rowe is just a really good dude and a big fan of BSU, and uh, they're going to be giving away Mike Prater golf towels at the uh, golf tournament coming up uh, next month, so we appreciate RoePaint.com, ROEPaint.com. Check them out for all your painting needs. Idaho Central Credit Union, we'll be talking about Tyson Degenhardt, and uh, Idaho Central 
Credit Union, one of the folks that's uh, stepping up in the NIL game to take care of Tyson and keep him at Boise State. So return the favor. Uh, ICCU, there's a branch pretty much on every corner. Go sign up, switch your banking over. I, I know that uh, they're a sponsor of ours, but I truly believe and wish I we had made the switch to ICCU earlier because I'm just so happy. It's so easy, and it's been the easiest banking experience of our life once we switched to ICCU for our personal and business accounts. So highly recommend them. Check them out, ICCU. Dot com. Ridley's Family Markets, shop ridleys.com, 14 locations across the state of Idaho, more in the surrounding states. If I do move, and again, this is dangerous, I might be moving closer to Johnny, uh, but if I do, it's uh, closer to that uh, CUNA location there. Shop ridleys.com, find a location near you. We appreciate Ridley's Family Markets. And again, download their app, get up to 40% off at the checkout line with the Shop Ridley's app, shop ridleys. Dot com. And I mentioned Matt Bowsher, the number one ranked realtor in the Treasure Valley for a reason. We've been working with them. We're super happy and thankful we made the switch. Him and Kelly Ridley, they're doing an outstanding job. Very thankful for Matt and his team. And every step of the way, I've been super impressed. So if you're looking to uh, buy or sell a home, make the switch today. Uh, if you, I know everybody has friends that are realtors, but uh, switch on over to Bowsher Real Estate. Let them take care of you. You will not be disappointed every step of the way, personal service uh, and attention. And again, 243-8222. You can check them out online, bowsherrealestate.com. All right, Mike Prater, we had the closed scrimmage on Saturday. We were not able to uh, watch the scrimmage, but there were some good stats from the scrimmage. Uh, Spencer Danielson spoke. Let's hear Spencer Danielson, his opening statement, his thoughts on the uh, Boise State scrimmage on Saturday. Now it was always on a Saturday, so it was good to finally get our first scrimmage under our belt as of uh, this being practice number nine. So we got six more practices left. So a lot, just like anything in a first scrimmage, a lot of really good stuff that we're excited about where we're growing to, but a lot to clean up at all positions, operational, especially with refs out there. I mean, we had seven penalties, which is always something in a scrimmage that, especially the first one you got, trying to play clean and a pretty even on both sides of the ball. So we got to make sure we um, improve those things. But it was cool to see some guys make plays. It was cool to see um, the O and D go back and forth, trying to put them in a lot of different situations from field zones, to two minute and a half, two minute and a game, and see how guys respond. And a lot of it too is me back there handling the sack so we can keep these drives moving and make sure iron will sharpen iron on both sides of the ball. So um, I'm proud of how our guys competed today, did a great job prepping for this scrimmage, especially with a decent amount of guys out for spring, some other guys stepping up and getting really good reps. So it's cool to see some guys step up. We had um, a couple touchdowns today. Troy Wilkie ran the ball in for a touchdown. Prince had a TD, Bolt had a TD, uh, Trell had a TD. I think those are the four, right, Pat? So it's cool to see some guys make some plays. There's some guys making some plays on defense, too. Um, Jeremiah Irby had a big-time pass breakup, and there's a bunch of other things that are going to show up on the defensive film um, that guys are doing really good. So proud of where we're growing to. There's a lot of stuff that's really good on film, especially as the first scrimmage. But just like anything, a lot to, a lot to clean up. There he is, Spencer Danielson, talking Mike Prater after the first spring scrimmage. Uh, I'll put some of the stats on the screen here. They did have four touchdowns. Latrell Capel's five-yard pass from Malachi Nelson. Troy Wilkie had a two-yard run. Austin Bolt, a 27-yard touchdown pass from Colt Fulton. Prince Strawn had a 40-yard touchdown pass from C.J. Tiller. And then Jonah Dalmas had a 43-yard field goal. You heard that Irby uh, pass break up in the end zone. A couple QB hurries there as well. And then here's kind of the individual stats. Uh, Nelson was 7 of 10 for 73 yards and a touchdown. Colt Fulton, 11 of 19. You see Tiller on there, 5 and 9, 63 yards. The big thing, and we do have another soundbite I can play in a minute, Mike Prater, on the quarterback specifically, but no interceptions for the quarterbacks, which, again, on social media, everyone was ripping the defense. Same problem as last year. Can't get a pick on defense. You can't win, I guess, when you're a coach in spring. Um, but to overall, just you're, we couldn't watch it. We just listened and, and talked to Spencer and saw the stats. What, what were your takeaways? Well, the first thing I noticed, well, I had two questions right off the bat. I'm curious about the rotation of the quarterbacks. I don't know if you know if that means anything, uh, but I, and maybe you got that answer. I'm not sure in terms of who came out. They listed them in order of Tiller, Fulton, and Malachi Nelson. So I was just more curious about the rotation. But the big thing that stood out for me, and uh, this one kind of surprised me, no Breezy Dubar. Uh, did he not get any carries? He wasn't listed there. No, he did not play. He did not play, but did we expect that? Maybe you knew something. I did not expect that because we've seen him in practice, and he's been doing just fine. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen him in yellow, uh, so I, I, I'm not sure why they left him out, and, and maybe that was just a one-day blip, but it was kind of curious for me as to why no catches for Breezy Dubar. We certainly didn't expect Maddox Madsen to have anything, so that that part makes a lot of sense there. But, yeah, I mean, I don't the, the quarterbacks not having any interceptions to me is a bigger deal than the defense picking off the plays, so I'm not worried about that. Irby has clearly established himself as a starting cornerback. 
I think that's the only position, and this is just us talking. Certainly it isn't the coaches talking, but he's the only guy in spring ball so far that has won himself a starting position. Backup core, uh, secondary, the second cornerback spot next to Amarion McCoy. I think that, that spot is kind of, I wouldn't say wrapped up, but he certainly is the leader in the clubhouse for that spot. He's had a fantastic spring in terms of making big plays every single day in spring. So when he shows up at scrimmage, that doesn't surprise me. So Irby, I think, has been the biggest surprise uh, and the biggest pleasant surprise of spring camp so far. And the fact that the quarterbacks didn't throw any interceptions, I'm okay with that. I don't care about the defense at this point. I need to see quarterback development, and that's a good sign, BJ. Let's hear from Spencer Danielson talking about the play of the quarterbacks in the first scrimmage. Taking care of the ball was a, was a big part of it, right? So no interceptions. Uh, Coach Cutter did a great job rolling a bunch of guys, making sure a lot of guys got reps. Uh, Malachi did a good job today. Um, made some good decisions, made some good throws. CJ did some good stuff today too. Made some good decisions, some good throws. Obviously there's going to be some stuff on film for both of them that they need to clean up. And Colt came in and did a really good job too, leading the, leading the drive there at the end. So proud of where they're growing to, just like getting seeing them where they're, where they're at practice one as a whole group, seeing where they are now at practice nine, a lot of growth and development. Coach Cutter, our offensive staff's done a really good job. Um, and now it's just, it's just like anything, what kind of jump we're going to take from scrimmage one to scrimmage two? So we got practice Tuesday, Thursday, another big scrimmage next weekend. What's the what's the progress at all positions? That's going to be my thing to our team and our coaches. Is okay, we are what we put on film right now. That's what I told our our whole team. Like it's not what you did last year or what you want to do this coming season or what you want to tweet about. Like you are what you put on film right now, and. How you are right now is exactly who you are. Now, there's going to be areas of growth at every position at all levels. Where do we grow from here? And then we're going to put it on film again next Saturday and then the Saturday after that. So Saturday. proud of where we're going. I will say this, Mike Prater, as someone that uh, has been out there for a good majority, we all have, of the uh, the practices this spring. Um, and again, we're not in the meetings. We're not in the walkthroughs. And our football eye of what we see is not the same in terms of what actually matters. And coaches, sometimes they make the right read. Maybe sometimes a guy drops the ball or it's not always what we see. But I, in my untrained eye, I've seen some improvement from Malachi Nelson over the last uh, couple of weeks. That first practice or two, he was dropping snaps. Uh, he was having, you know, missing badly. I remember an interception he threw where there was no receiver within like 20 yards. Um, and let's be honest, it's a big adjustment coming in. He's still the same class. People forget this. He's still the same class, same age as CJ Tiller. I mean, second year college player, those guys are the same thing. And he didn't play, you know, he was injured some last year, didn't get to practice the whole year. And, and so I think a lot of people come and expected him from practice one to be the savior in this, <coughs> excuse me, conference player of the year. And he may get there, but learning a new offense, new OC coming in, you know, right before spring ball. Um, I think the transition as you know, probably should have has gone a little slower maybe for him, but I think the last week or two, I mean, I've seen some, some just the command of the offense. I've seen him thread the needle on a couple passes where it's like, wow, that was a nice throw. Um, I don't know if you've seen that or noticed that, but <clears throat> excuse me, I'm going to let you talk. Uh, I've been impressed lately with what I've seen from Malachi Nelson. Yeah, no, I think it really clicked for him last week. And again, like you said, we can't speak for for Saturday's practice, but the numbers are, are there and pretty decent. Although he had, I think, less attempts than anybody. You know, uh, uh, Fulton had double the attempts of anybody, uh, and I'm not sure if that's by design. But yeah, it, it absolutely clicked for him uh, this this last two practices, last Tuesday and last Thursday. For me, it was more about the body language and, and interacting with players and slapping guys on the butts and high-fiving and, and maybe cracking a smile every now and then, maybe running down the field five, ten yards and high-fiving a player who just made a big play. So I think he's busting out of his shell physically. I think he's busting out of his shell mentally. And, uh, you know, we all expected this to happen the first couple of weeks of practice. If you're expecting great things from Malachi Nelson, you're just a fan with your head in the clouds, and that's okay. This time of year, that's what you're supposed to do as a fan, but it's not really the reality. And I think last Tuesday and last Thursday, when it really started popping for Malachi, that became the reality, and I expect the trajectory to be massive. Um, I was thinking about this last night, BJ, and I, I hesitate, and we talk about this here at Idaho Sports Talk all the time in terms of being responsible and being irresponsible when it comes to talking about the transfer portal. And here's a scenario that I've never personally contemplated. I don't know if you have. What if Malachi Nelson continues to click for these next two weeks? And Maddox Madsen is the guy who ends up in the transfer portal uh, in a couple of weeks when the transfer portal opens on April 15th and certainly after the spring game. I don't want to get inside that dude's head, but Maddox Madsen thinks he can play. Maddox Madsen knows he can play. And if Malachi Nelson – and the transfer portal – always surprises us. There's going to be a surprise coming or going. 
That's what the transfer portal does. It's like this Christmas that creeps up on you and gives and then takes it away. And I was thinking last night for the first time in my life, because I'd never even thought about the possibility of Maddox Madsen uh, transferring. And I'm, I'm just speculating. I have no idea. I mean, at one point I was saying Maddox Madsen's going to start next year when it comes to the season, and Malachi Nelson's going to finish it. I think that's way too far ahead to look and analyze and break down and forecast what these guys are going to do. I think we need to keep an eye on these next 10 to 15 days to see what's going to happen. And if Malachi Nelson continues to get better like he did this past week, these last three practices, and what, we got about six more to go. If he continues that trajectory and the writing is on the wall, Maddox Madsen would be crazy not to look in the mirror and go, I want to play. And I see the writing on the wall, and now is the time to do it. It's certainly something I'm going to be looking for. We only got uh, six, seven minutes left, and I want to talk about your column as well. But I, I get one more thought on this, uh, and I agree with you. I mean, anything's possible. And all three of these guys, because I wanted to ask you about C.J. Tiller before you brought up Madsen there. We talked to Tiller last week, and I know he's coming in your studio, I believe. I don't know if you've announced that or not. Sorry if I wasn't supposed to say anything. But uh, you, guys are gonna have, you guys are going to have Tiller, and very well-spoken young man, and – Fairly or unfairly, like maybe it's only half a percentage point, Mike Prater, but like I moved based on watching CJ Tiller throw up practice that day. I was really impressed. And then talking to him, I, even if it's only 1%, I like in my mind increase the chances that CJ Tiller could be the quarterback at least slightly. Um, and I'm not saying he's going to start. He's probably not. But uh, with the way he handled it uh, with the media and what he's talking about off the field and how he played last year, I think a lot of people just wrote him off after that bowl game, like not remembering how hard it is for your first ever game and and what you can do. And everyone's talking about Nelson and Maddox. And uh, I guess my long-winded question is like, is there any chance CJ, are, are we, I mean, is, is this only a Maddox versus Malachi thing? Or is there any way CJ Tiller could work his way into this competition? Let's put them all three together, BJ. I mean, let's marry these two conversations and put them all three together. Do we honestly believe that Boise State will go into fall camp with all three of these quarterbacks? You're a thousand percent right, dude, when you talked about CJ Tiller. And, and he's okay in practice. He's the practices that we've seen. He's, he doesn't really stand out. No, none of the quarterbacks have stood out. Maddox Madsen is surprised us with how much in, um, how much progress he's made and how much he's doing. That part is there. Malachi surprised us last week by, not surprises, but we finally got to see what he possibly can do. CJ's just been kind of a steady force, but really, when he showed up at that press conference the other day, that dude was confident, that dude was smart, that dude was sharp, that dude carries himself like a starting quarterback who's been around for a couple of years. He's got so much stinking confidence in himself that there's no way that when this spring ball is done or going into fall ball, he's going to look at himself and say, I, I see the writing that I'm the third string quarterback here. I'm not a third string quarterback, guys. Maybe he's the guy that is going to leave. Malachi Nelson's not leaving. But if we put all three of these guys together into one group, I think one of the three leaving, whether it's going to be, you know, whether it's going to be Maddox, whether it's going to be CJ, I'd be shocked if they went into fall camp with all three of these quarterbacks. Yeah, John Reagan says uh, Prater Madsen's 5'10". Uh, where would he transfer that as good as BSU is for his development? Uh, he's shocked that Tiller hasn't transferred yet, and he says he has no idea what Fulton is doing. Um, and then I guess uh, our friend Derek Morales has the answer. He just says, let's do the three QB system. <laughs> That'll go over really, really well. Maddox Madsen is the best quarterback on this football team right now. The height is an issue. And it's not about development. I don't think Maddox Madsen's worried about going into the NFL, guys. Stop using that word develop. He wants to develop as a college quarterback, but you could do that anywhere. I can see Maddox Madsen, I don't know, big sky. I mean, he could go to Montana and be a rock star and play for national championships. I'm just throwing out stupid scenarios. Don't take any of this seriously. But it just dawned on me last night because I've never, ever entertained the thought that Maddox Madsen was going to transfer. And last night I told myself, don't be that naive. Because these things can happen. And Maddox Madsen has made significant progress with his knee. He's worked his ass off the last five months to get to where he is right now. And you don't put in that kind of work to sit on the bench. And these kids are smart. And they sit in the meetings. And they hear the vibe from the coaches. And they know what's going on. And I think in a couple of weeks, Maddox Madsen's going to have a pretty good idea of where he sits on this roster, knowing that he worked his butt off for the last five months. And is a payoff going to be there for him? I don't know. That's a question he has to ask himself, and at least now I realize that it's a possibility, and I'm going to keep an eye on it.
And let's not forget, Mike, there's this new day of college football guys, maybe. And I'm not saying this is going to be any of these three guys in particular, but just college football in general, like with the NIL and the transfer portal and not having to sit out a year, like um, the competition of like, oh, I'm I, maybe I'm fourth on the depth chart. Who cares? I can get up to first in a year or two. Like a lot of that's just gone. If you're not starting or you're not playing or you're at least not number two, you, you're gone. And it's one thing to say, oh, I can beat out one guy. But one of these guys is saying, I got to beat out two guys. And I think that, you know, does make it um, a little more different and just that old school competition of I'm not going anywhere. I'm here and I'm going to earn it. Even if I'm a senior, like a Grant Hedrick or somebody that didn't play till they were a senior, you just don't see that anymore in this day and age in college basketball. And both, all three of those guys are looking around going, I got to beat out two of these guys to be the starter. Um, and so, yeah, maybe one of them does decide, heck, I'm not, I'm not, I'm out of here. I don't know. We'll, 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 uh, We'll wait and see. We got a couple of minutes left, Mike Prater. I, I want to thank a couple more of our sponsors real quick, but I want to talk about your column in just a second before, as we wrap it up. Uh, Lithia Ford at Boise. Check them out, lithiafordboise.com. You can view their full inventory of vehicles online at lithiafordboise.com. And again, they're sponsoring the hole in one uh, deal at our golf tournament. So you want to win a hole in one? Come sign up for the golf tournament or want to win a car? Come get a hole in one at the golf tournament. And it's yours. And we thank our friends at Lithia Ford of Boise. Taco Bell, we appreciate them and they are hiring. And how about this? You can get half your wages the very next day after your shift and you get free food while you're working. So if you need a new job, but you don't want to wait three weeks to get that first paycheck, Taco Bell can help you out. Quick cash and uh, TacoBellWorks.com. We appreciate the SON management, the Nicolaisen family for their support. Check them out, TacoBellWorks.com. The Blue and Orange Store, uh, Boise State gear. Check them out, shirts, caps, jerseys, you name it. Uh, I saw T Travis Ox uh, was down there at the Final Four, uh, Mike, so uh, jealous of that. But uh, the Blue and Orange Store.com, free shipping on any order over $40 as well. Transportation Compliance Service, check them out, transcomservice.com. Looking for a job, get into the trucking industry, highly recommend them. They can help you with the permits and things you need. Uh, check them out, again, online, transcomservice.com. Bronco Brew Coffee, I know at least one uh, person in the chat earlier said they're drinking some this morning, so check them out, broncobrew.coffee. Help out Boise State in the NIL game and have some delicious tasting coffee uh, at the same time. Leanfeastmeridian.com, I'm eating a ton of lean feast right now, not being able to cook and as they're getting our house ready to sell so check them out it's perfect two minutes in the microwave steak shrimp chicken you name it turkey leanfeastmeridian.com and of course timberstone golf course they got the new carts the new water stations highly recommend timberstone golf course uh and uh, the weather's warming up and need to get out there for some rounds here uh pretty soon okay final thing final two minutes here mike prater your column just got posted before the show bronconationnews.com it is for subscribers only. So hopefully you're a subscriber. You can go on there and read this and pay it. It's well worth the six bucks a month, or I would just recommend $50 one year, pay it and be done uh, using that promo code at the bottom of the screen, BNN 50 deal. But uh, uh, you, you, uh, you you mentioned you were thinking about Maddox Madsen last night, and sometimes you just get random thoughts that pop into your head and uh, it makes for a very intriguing columnist and column. And uh, this is what you came up with track and field and the Boise State football team. Don't give it all away, but uh, <laughs> what, 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 are your, what, are, what, what are your thoughts here? Well, it's track and field season, and I'm an old track and field guy who had nothing to do with speed, so uh, I've always been intrigued by track and field, and I remember the days around here when, when football players played on the track and field team, and I know track and field, the program's going through lots of issues over the last 10 years. I know they got rid of another coach just a few weeks ago, and it had me thinking about that kind of stuff. And Boise State players, football players, don't compete in track and field anymore. And I was more curious about who were the speedsters on this team because mostly it was an issue with this football team specifically last year, maybe even specifically on the defense in the back half of that defense. So who are the fastest guys on the team? We made a big deal of it in the offseason. Spencer Danielson went out and signed nine players on signing day that had track and field experience. He took advantage of the speed. This team needs a lot of speed. And I'm thinking to myself, who's the fastest players on this team? And I thought it was pretty cool on Saturday. Caples, Wilkie, Bolt, and Prince Strawn all had touchdowns on Saturday. All four of those guys and about a half a dozen other names I put out there in terms of some of the fastest players on the team. And I think it's really interesting. When you ask a football player a question, it's always Team this, team that, team this, team that. Always the corporate line. But when you ask them, who's the fastest player on the team, they always like to talk about themselves, and it's pretty cool. Speed's a big deal, and this is a column about speed. Yeah, and you talk about the fastest players on the team and also kind of the ongoing debate about why uh, football players don't run track. Maybe in high school it's a lot more common because you don't have as much uh, responsibility with the football team in the spring. Um, and you were able to, to talk to Spencer Danielson. We kind of pulled him aside at one of the practices and uh, asked him about it, and I thought it was a very well-written, thoughtful column about 
who is who are the fastest players and what are their thoughts on on potentially running track so folks can uh, check that out subscribe uh bronco nation news.com one more quick plug for the golf tournament hopefully you will sign up mike prater we only got like eight foursomes left in the uh, morning we're gonna sell this thing out in the next week or two so if you want in uh you better get in now bronco nation news.com slash golf uh, or you can email me, reigns at bronconationnews.com. We have afternoon spots available starting at 1.30. There are a few spots left in the morning starting at 8.30. We have whole sponsorships available as well. So raising a lot of money for a couple local charities, including the Idaho Youth Sports Commission. We're going to tell you more about the charities here moving forward. we got some cool things we're starting up this year with that. Uh, but uh, hang out. And as I said, Spencer Danielson will be at this uh, tournament, will be at the night before event. So Going to be a lot of fun raising money for some good causes. Again, May 31st out at Timberstone Golf Course. Mike, uh, big Monday coming up on Idaho Sports Talk today. What do we got? Oh, we're going to talk a little uh, stadium. We're going to talk a little Albertson Stadium. And I know you talked about this last week. We're going to feed off that a little bit here at Idaho Sports Talk. But, you know, the stadium and, and the seats and the dynamics of those seats and the premium seats versus the cheap seats and reducing the stadium capacity and the pros and cons of some of that, maybe even get into some of the specifics of some of that design and we're also going to talk to uh, Mr. Henry Morgan. You haven't probably heard that name, but we got a chance to meet Henry Morgan at Pro Day a couple of weeks ago at Boise State. He is George Helani's agent. And Mr. Henry Morgan told me specifically on Pro Day that he thinks George Helani is going to go in the third round or could go as high as the third round. That's agent speak. We all get that. Um, I think we've all been very intrigued in terms of George Helani and what he's done to build his NFL resume. And from my perspective, he's gone from no shot to a pretty decent shot at getting drafted. And today we're going to hear from his agent, Henry Morgan. Looking forward to that. Three to six today, Idaho Sports Talk, uh, leading into the national championship game uh, tonight that tips off about 720. So three to six, uh, Bob, JP, Prater, Johnny, the whole crew, make sure you're listening today to Idaho Sports Talk. We're appreciative of our partnership uh, with KTIK and Idaho Sports Talk and here at Bronco Nation News. So appreciate everybody for checking us out. Go subscribe to the website so you can read Prater's column. Uh, sign up for the golf tournament before it uh, fills up and uh, go support the sponsors. Uh, this thing's not possible if you don't support the this. You're watching a free show right now, whether you're a subscriber or not, and it's thanks to all of our great sponsors like Row Painting, and, and uh, we couldn't do it without all of them. So go support the sponsors. Tell them you appreciate their being in average advertising and uh even the occasional mike prater column you appreciate that too we know you do uh but uh thanks so much mike thanks to jp for getting us on the air thanks again everybody for checking us out uh, uh nope no show tomorrow morning or at least it might be a different time uh i'm not sure yet with uh jay tust uh, due to practice yeah last two last tuesday i did one like standing out in the parking lot and got some weird looks from folks so we'll see if i do that again or not uh but uh appreciate it have a great rest of your day we'll be listening to idaho sports talk We'll talk to you at some point soon. Bronco Nation News Live here at bronconationnews.com.